All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Martha from the coordinator for the Money Management Center here on campus. Thank you so much for joining us. I know it's a late afternoon, but thank you so much for being here. I think there's a great interest in this topic on car buying. So we're really excited to have Noemi Valenzuela uh, come back from EECU to do this great presentation. Again, uh, feel free to type in any questions you have in the chat box, or if you want to raise your hand, we'll make sure to let uh, Noemi know about any questions along the way. But Noemi, I'll go ahead and hand it over to you, but I'll be here in the background. Awesome. All right. So again, good afternoon. Thanks for being here. Uh, I know it's a little late, but uh, we've got a, I think we've got a really interesting topic today. We've got car buying um, and something that just, uh, I think it's very common, right? Especially uh, as college students, um, that's always the goal is to buy a car. So uh, again, my name is Noemi Valenzuela. I am with EECU. I've been with EECU now for about uh, 15 years. Uh, dating myself there. Uh, but again, I do these financial literacy classes. Uh, we cover a variety of topics is uh, if you've been to our workshops before, you'll know that. So again, uh, our topic today is car buying. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Just give me a minute here. And again, if anybody has any questions while we're going through the presentation, uh, please, you know, feel free to open um, or put it in the chat. Um, and we can go from there. I'm just trying to get my windows here. Give me a sec. I just lost everybody. There we go. Okay. All right. All right. So car buying 101. That's what we're going to cover today. Uh, so it's the road to purchasing a vehicle, right? We'll give you tips, um, a little more, just some insight on, um, on car buying and, and little tidbits that, that we should know here and there. All right. So the very first step when we're thinking or even considering purchasing a vehicle, the recommended first step is to consider your credit report and credit score. Right. So a credit report will give you an idea on where you're at, like uh, in terms of open lines of credit, like payment history, you know, how how is it looking for you? Uh, again, that credit report, you can look it up um, on annualcreditreport.com or and I'll go back to the credit score or you can look it up at these three credit reporting agencies. These are the three main ones in the United States. Um, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. So given if you pull a credit report from Equifax, it may not look like TransUnion or Experian. There might be some extra information or just information missing compared to the other ones. And that will be because not all credit reporting and not all uh, financial institutions uh, report to the same credit reporting agency. So just, just a heads up on that one. Uh, again, uh, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, you can pull your credit report for free once a year. After that, uh, there may, uh, there may be a fee involved. So um, annualcreditreport.com pulls from these three companies. So again, know what's on there, right? It's very important to just know your history, even if you're not ready to make that purchase yet as far as a vehicle. Um, I, I would say, you know, get your credit report just to see what's on there. It's always, it's always safe, right? Just to see if you have any debt that you don't know about or also um, just to make sure there's no fraud. Um, someone isn't using your personal information. All right, so we talked about the credit report. Credit report is like your adult transcript, right? There's a lot of history on there. On the credit report, uh, a lot of personal information, where have you lived, all the addresses you've had, where you've worked, um, different names you've used, um, if any, and just really a lot of uh, history on how you make your payments as well, what lines of credit you have open. Then there's the credit score. So I recommend, you know, we recommend pulling your credit report, your credit score, if you want to get that, sometimes there's a fee involved with that. So just be aware of it. But again, knowing your credit score is important as well. Again, just to see where you're at. So your credit score is like your adult GPA. Um, as an adult, everything we do is usually related back to our credit score somehow or somehow, especially if you're trying to purchase a vehicle, right? They'll really consider your credit history and your credit score. All right. So this is the credit um, credit score range, right? Um, and it can vary depending on the company that you're looking at, but this is just an idea. So the lowest is 300, the highest is 850. And you can see all the in-betweens. So 720 would be your average credit score in the United States. Uh, that was before pandemic. But again, it just gives you an idea of where people are at. Um, 720 is not too bad. Um, 585 or below, you may run into some problems, right? And again, you won't know this, this until you pull your credit report or pull your, um, your credit score. So how does this affect? Like, what's the connection? We're talking about credit score, credit history. What's the connection when we're trying to purchase a vehicle? Why do we say this? 
because it affects your payments, right? It affects how much you're going to pay when you're trying to get a loan or even, a, you know, especially here, what we're talking about, just a vehicle loan. So let's say these are examples, um, you know, may not be exact, but again, it's just an example. Let's say you have excellent credit. Um, that car that you want or that, you know, vehicle that you want is $20,000 out the door and you're saying, okay, well, I need to borrow this from the bank or the credit union. So this is the scenario. The first one, excellent credit. This one, orange is low credit. Um, the amount, $20,000. So because you have an excellent credit score, they're giving you an interest rate, which is the fee that you have to pay, right? To borrow that money, 2.99%, which is not too bad, right? It's, it's really low, especially right now in our economy. Uh, I don't think you'll be able to find that anywhere, but here we go. So you're agreeing to uh, pay this loan off in 72 months. Yes, that's a long time, but again, this is just an example. So uh, now you're saying that every single month for 72 months, you will pay that loan back. Every single month, your fee will be $304, okay? That's your monthly payment. At the end of those 72 months, what you will have paid back uh, to the credit union or the bank with that interest, 21,877. So let's look at this orange scenario, right? The low credit. Um, so we can say it's bad credit. Again, that same loan amount, 20,000. Your interest rate, because you have the low credit score, your interest rate just went up 16.5%. And when we're starting off, another thing, and I'm going off a little bit here, but sometimes if you don't have credit, sometimes that can equal a higher interest rate. It's like as you had low, as if you had low credit. So just consider that, keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> Again, we're talking the term, we're gonna say 72 months, we'll pay off this uh, this loan. Now your payment also went up, right? Because your interest rate went up. Your monthly payment will now be $441 per month. The total repayment after the 72 months will be 31,634, right? So that's a lot when you only borrow 20,000. So that's a little over $11,000 difference. So again, this is how bad credit affects you, especially when you're trying to buy a vehicle. Right. In the long run, if you have low credit, your interest rate will probably be a lot higher and that's going to cost you more in the long run. So things to consider. Right. This is what I'm trying to make that connection of why it's important to see what your credit history is and see what your credit score is, because that's going to affect ultimately how much you're going to pay at the end, especially when trying to get a, a vehicle loan. All right. So. Determine your budget, right? After we pulled our credit score, after we know our credit history, what can we afford? So know your net monthly income, right? That's after taxes, what your take home pay, what your paycheck is per month, minus your monthly expense, right? How much are your bills all together in one month? What you're left with is the amount that you have left to spend, of course, right? So let's say your net income, $2,500, which would be great, right? Your monthly expenses, let's say they're $1,100, you're left with $1,400. So that would be your amount to spend. That would be like your free money, we can say. All right. So how do we determine this, right? When we're trying to figure out a payment, there's a lot of calculators online. Um, and, I'll, and I'll give you a QR code as we go into this presentation. But Consider this, right? Recommendations, spend less, and this is the, you know, financial advisors tell you, tell you this, spend less than 10% of your monthly take-home pay on a car payment. So 10% of your monthly income on your car payment. Is that always doable? No, it's not, right? Especially right now, cars are expensive. Just vehicles in general are expensive. Um, interest rates are really high. So it's just, it just a, a, a side note, right? If you can wait a little longer and hold off to buying that vehicle, then maybe you wanna just wait it out, right? So again, just a recommendation. So here are some resources. I talked about, you know, the calculators and all this when you're uh, trying to look into buying a vehicle. Uh, here on our website, these are free. Um, you can just, you know, start playing, start clicking on these and it'll, it'll guide you through some other tips as well if you're trying to buy a vehicle. There's some, you know, calculators on the loan payment, uh, some insurance options, you know, just a lot just to help you and give you that outline when you're trying to purchase a vehicle, what to look for. And you can see the QR code there as well. All right. So next thing, right? What type of vehicle do you need? Uh, it could be that you just need, you know, you need something for yourself, maybe just to while you get through school, um, something simple, something very basic, get me from point A to point B, maybe get me through my first year of my, you know, of a job. Um, or maybe you have family, right? That means you may need a bigger car or more reliable or maybe a newer car. 
The other thing is storage, right? Are you cool with just a hatchback, a little car that just, you don't need extra storage, again, just to get you from point A to point B, or are you needing a truck maybe, or an SUV, just you need that extra space, right? The other thing is speed and power. Um, again, it all depends on you, on your needs. What are you needing? Do you need a car that goes a lot faster than your average car? Does it need more power? Are you hauling things or hauling uh, maybe trailers, whatever it may be, right? Again, things to consider when, um, when you're trying to figure out and make that list of what you need as far as a vehicle. Another thing to add here too is things to consider, right? Um, and I'll go on to the next one as well. Luxury and just regular cars, right? I'll say regular, it's just your average car. Uh, just to keep in mind when you're making that list of needs, uh, remember that a luxury car, yes, it's very nice, <laughs> but uh, sometimes a luxury car um, comes with a little more expenses, right? Just the maintenance on it, um, like the oil changes may be a little more pricey compared to just your average car, right? So again, goes back to the choices. Or do you want to purchase a new car? Do you want to purchase a used one, car, you know, SUV, whatever it may be. Uh, the type of vehicle, a coupe, sedan, SUV, van, truck, etc. right? All these are choices that we have. Um, now, if we want to go with the used car, if you're considering going with the used car, one thing to uh, consider also is, and especially if you're, you know, looking about, um, maybe at a car dealership, look into the Carfax. Um, and the Carfax is a report that tells you the history of this vehicle. A lot of times the um, the car dealerships will have these on hand, right? They're not mandated to have it, but most of them do. And you can ask for it just to see that history. Sometimes it's on the window, um, but this gives you an idea. It's like, has this car been in any accidents? Was there any damage to this car? And that will kind of, set the the tone as to where you're at right where you're at in pricing how much you're willing to pay what you're up against if it's going to need more maintenance than usual because it's had some type of um, accident history so again all about the choices and just you know research and i'm going to say this over and over when we're talking this in this presentation just car buying is do your research as much as you can um, if you're considering buying a vehicle you know, try to take your time if, if it's in your hands and just that'll give you time to research and really know what you're getting yourself into and know that that car that you want to purchase will be the one, right? You, there's no surprises. All right, so how will you purchase this car? Will it be cash? Have you saved up enough cash just to pay it all in full, right? Will it be a trade-in? Do you have a current car that you're gonna trade in to try to get money for that? Uh, the other thing is loan, um, or do you plan to get a loan, right? And um, do you plan to just make payments on a monthly basis? How much of those, how much of that can you afford? What's a monthly payment that you can afford? A healthy health, um, a healthy uh, monthly payment. Or will you consider a lease? Uh, so again, all of these things to consider. Now, if you plan to get a loan um, and you try, you know, you, you plan to get a loan for, for this vehicle, try to, um, try to get it with your credit union or your bank right, that financial institution you already have, wherever you have your accounts. That will make the process a lot smoother. Um, the second thing is most likely, uh, you'll probably get a more affordable interest rate compared to the car dealership. So just consider that when, when taking, uh, when doing, when purchasing a vehicle, right? It's always a lot easier when you come in hand with already how much you're gonna uh, get as, as far as a loan or how much you're gonna borrow from the credit or bank. So when we're shopping for a vehicle, a car, right? What are we looking for? So first thing is car warranty, right? There's different cars, uh, different vehicles that'll have different types of warranties. Maybe it depends on where you're at, right? Maybe it depends on the car dealership. Maybe it just depends on the brand of the car. Some brands have a lot longer warranty compared to others. Um, and again, it's all about that research. It's like, what is the car that's going to last you longer or it's gonna be worthwhile? Um, also check the age of the vehicle, like what year is the vehicle, right? If you're, if they're asking for this price, it's almost like $60,000 and the vehicle is from like 2006. Hmm, I, I don't know, is that is that gonna be worth it, right? Um, not only the age of the vehicle, but the mileage. How many miles does that car have on it already? So the close, you know, the more mileage you have on a vehicle, that can potentially mean that more maintenance fees, right? You're going to have to do more maintenance on that car. The other thing is, um, uh, the estimated cost of insurance, right? 
the cost of insurance and there's calculators online, especially that QR code that, you, that I uh, mentioned on, on our screen, that'll help you as well. But do your research uh, because a lot of it, uh, your cost of insurance depends on where you live, um, your commute, how long is your commute if you have one, the type of vehicle that you plan to purchase, right? That all goes into play when estimating the cost of your insurance. The other thing is fuel economy. So fuel economy is pretty much the rating of how far a vehicle can travel um, on the specific amount of fuel, right? So the less fuel the vehicle uses, the higher the fuel economy. It's gonna cost you less in gas, right? It, you'll get more for your, for your butt, per se. Uh, in the United States, the standard um, measure of fuel economy is miles per gallon. So you'll see that MPG. Right, miles per gallon. Usually the smaller vehicles get have a better fuel economy, right? You get more mileage on in that whole gas tank. With bigger vehicles like trucks, um, that's gonna cost you a little more, right? Because it has less mileage to to for for the gas for that tank of gas. And uh, right now in our uh, in our environment, we know that gas goes up and down, right? So things again, things to consider you have to research. Other fees to keep in mind. We're not only talking about the price of the vehicle, right? But we're also talking about, okay, when we do the math, when all is said and done, how much are we going to pay per month? Um, and how long is our contract? Are we looking like I, uh, we mentioned earlier, right? The 72 months, that's a long time. Um, but who knows, maybe that's feasible for you, right? It all depends on you. Uh, but how much is that gonna cost you in the long run when all is said and done? Is it worth it, right? How much interest are you gonna pay? The other thing to consider is not only that, um, aside from your monthly payment, there's also other fees, your taxes, your license, right? The registration. Uh, how much is the registration for that car or that vehicle that you're purchasing? Um, and sometimes it can be really high. So also, you know, it's not just your monthly payment. Also consider these other ones. Another thing is your down payment. Are you, um, do, you do you have money saved up to put a down payment, right? Usually in most cases, that'll mean that if you have a bigger down payment, that means your monthly payments, um, you know, will, will be lower. Uh, do you have a trade-in? Do you have a car that you're going to trade in hoping to get some money for that? Rebates, right? Right now with a lot of the electrical vehicles, electric vehicles, there's a lot of rebates. Um, those are things to consider too. Is that going to save you money? Is it going to be worth it, right? Do you get the rebate now or are you going to see it later? Maybe when you do your taxes or towards the end of the year, whatever that may be. Uh, again, the cost of insurance, I mentioned that. Uh, the maintenance and fuel. And I mentioned this earlier too, if you have a luxury vehicle, usually that just your simple oil change is not so simple, right? It may be simple to some people, but it, it may be pricey um, or just the maintenance in general. Maybe you need a certain type of gas and it's gonna be the most expensive gas for that luxury vehicle. So maintenance and fuel are also extra fees that we need to consider. And I don't have this on here, but also when purchasing a vehicle, um, give yourself some wiggle room, right? Especially, and I'll, I'll put myself out there, when I purchased, um, my husband and I purchased our first vehicle and uh, we all, you know, we both knew we wanted a truck and we knew it was gonna be expensive. We knew the gas was really expensive um, because it was such a big, big, big truck. Uh, but we didn't consider when we were, when we were doing this whole process, we didn't consider um, just the extra fees, right? So we didn't consider, okay, well, we got a used truck, so that means it's gonna have more maintenance on it. We didn't give ourselves any wiggle room. It's like all our money was pretty much our month or going into our monthly payment. So if anything were to happen to that truck, we would be in trouble. Like we didn't give any wiggle room for ourselves, which is why financial advisors will tell you that um, that certain percentage, right? Don't go over that when, when you're, when you're uh, trying to purchase a vehicle. All right. So make a list of needs and wants, right? Especially when purchasing a vehicle. What type of engine do you want? Does it matter, right? Are you cool with a small engine? Um, three, four, six, or eight cylinder. Eight cylinder, of course, will be the bigger cars, the trucks. That's like if you need to haul something. Um, how many passengers, right? Two, are you good with two or do you need more? Uh, electric or hybrid, um, do you have a preference? Entertainment system. Uh, do you, you know, do you need a screen in your car? Do you need this big sound system or do you prefer it, right? Do you need extra space for a child seat and those extra accessories that come with a car, you know, for a child seat? So again, just make a list of needs and wants. And really when you have it written down, it helps to focus on it more, right? Because it is, it's very tempting. You're shopping for cars, you're like, oh, this looks good. I, I can go for that. But is it, you know, is it in your needs? Like do all the needs that I have on this list go with that car? 
or are they mostly wants? Is that going to cost more eventually? After you make this list of needs and wants, categorize the items, right? So again, we talked about the wants, Bluetooth, um, right? Could be a want for some people. If like me, I'm traveling all the time, so I will. I do need a Bluetooth because I will be on the phone. I will be getting phone calls, so it's a lot easier and safer. Um, do you need an upgraded sound system? I don't know, right? Heated seats. They're nice, don't get me wrong, but do you really need them? Um, upgraded rims, a sunroof, okay? Then there's your needs. Like how many doors do you need in that car? Is it four doors, is it two doors? Um, hauling capacity if you're looking for a big vehicle, right? Another need, especially here in the Valley during the summer, um, air conditioning, right? Because that's not a standard in all vehicles. It's not available in all of them. And we have to ask that question, like do our research, uh, make sure it matches, you know, what the car has or what the vehicle has is part of our needs. So again, um, things to ask or research. Uh, all right, so standard versus optional items, right? So um, you'll see when, you, when you're shopping for a vehicle, you'll see a sticker on the window um, and that's pretty much your, it's called the MSRP. Okay, so it's short for manufacturer suggested retail price. It's basically, basically the manufacturer's recommended retail price. Okay, so federal law requires these to be posted on the windows um, at the car dealerships. Um, and it's a result of a disclosure act that was, um, that was put out in 1958, All right? So it's, it, it, they have to have it on there. So a, typically a window sticker will present the MSRP and other vehicle information that will help the buyer, right? So that's why it's called the sticker price. Um, and this is only when we're talking about new cars. It's not mandated for used cars, okay? And this is an example of that. And again, you'll see it on the car, um, on the car window, especially in the, in the car lots. Um, and maybe there'll be extra information attached. But again, this is what you're looking at. It just gives you an overview of the car and what it's offering, you know, right? The MBG and all of this. All right, so when we're looking to purchase a vehicle, right? I talked about all those extra fees, the insurance. When you get your loan, um, other things to consider, right? There's something that's called gap insurance. So guaranteed asset protection. So it's pretty much an optional car insurance coverage that helps pay off your vehicle if your car is totaled or stolen and you owe more than the car's actual value. So you're still making payments on that car and something happens to it, right? The gap insurance will help cover that cost. Um, so it's, it's uh, gap insurance is good. It's a good option, okay? Um, for like drivers who owe more on their car than the car's actually worth, right? So as soon as you drive that car off the lot, um, it depreciates, right? It's just the way it is with our vehicles. But again, you know, just to protect yourself, that would be a good option is the gap insurance. Um, if you're currently making car loan payments, be sure to calculate the loan balance and weigh it against your car's cash value, right? Just that'll give you an idea of how or if you should get the gap asset protection, the gap insurance. All right. The other option when purchasing a vehicle is mechanical, mechanical breakdown protection, right? Um, so that's pretty much, it's NBI, okay? Um, mechanical breakdown insurance. And it's an optional part of car insurance. Um, so it's meant to like cover trips um, to the mechanic, not caused by an accident, but just maintenance, right? For example, maybe like a busted engine or um, a puncture in your air conditioner hose, okay, that would be covered by MBI or mechanical breakdown protection. So again, it just adds an extra layer of protection just to help you financially, because we know that when you take your car to the mechanic, that can be pricey, um, and it does. It costs a lot. Growing up, um, my dad is a mechanic, right? So he knows, uh, he, he fixes cars on the side and that has helped me a lot. And I'll be honest with you. It's like, if something goes wrong, um, there I am calling my dad. It's like, here, you know, I'm already an adult. I'm already have my own family, but I still call him. It's like, hey, you know, it's making this noise. And he'll give me tips. You know, it's like, well, just do this. It'll be a quick fix or do this. It won't be that expensive. So again, um, just keeping this into consideration because cars do break down, right? They will need maintenance and that may cost you. And if we're not careful, it can be very expensive. <laughs> All right. So optional protection when we're getting a loan, um, any type, any type of loan, really. So credit life insurance um, or disability insurance, 
helps pay off debt if you pass away, right? So it's pretty much protecting your family. Um, credit disability insurance covers loan payments, like if you were to become disabled and you couldn't work, you couldn't make those payments. So again, it adds that extra layer of protection just in case something happens. Um, again, it's optional, um, but you know, looking at the long run, you're, you want to protect your family, you want to protect yourself just in case something happens and you're not stuck or you know, um, in this financial hole because you couldn't work. All right. so. When we're looking to purchase a vehicle, test drive the car, new or used test drive it, right? And ideally take someone with you, especially if you have someone in your family or know someone who's maybe um, is very, uh, maybe is a mechanic, right? Or is very familiar with, um, with car maintenance. Um, so when you're doing a test drive, there's a lot of things to check for, right? Before you drive, check the engine. Um, and sometimes it can be just looking, sometimes we don't know what we're looking at, right? But if you open the engine, if you see leaks on, on the ground, okay, that's, that's a red flag. It's like, wait, why is this car leaking? And it's on the car lot. Let's wait. No, that shouldn't be right. Um, the exterior, right? Look for, um, look for anything. Maybe it's, um, I don't know, maybe it has a history of being in an accident and maybe it wasn't fixed, right? Maybe that's, um, that can be, um, that can be affecting how the car, you know, the, how the tires run or whatever it may be. Um, look at the interior, right? Is it in good condition? Um, check the air conditioner. Is it working? Does it have an air conditioner? Um, all the, you know, all the lights, all the, everything inside. It's, it seems very tedious, but these are little things that are going to matter, right? Check all these, uh, make sure they're working. Even the windows, right? Make sure that those are all working. They all go up and down when they're supposed to. Um, and while you're driving it, Again, you know, look at those windows. Um, are there blind spots, right? Is that going to be a problem for you? Um, when you're driving the car, test driving, what's the power like? You know, are, are you stepping on the gas and it's just not taking off? That can be a red flag too, right? Or is it simply not the power that you're looking for that you're needing? Um, these are, are things to consider. And just, are you comfortable, right? Um, are you comfortable on the car? And these are, it doesn't seem like a lot, like these details, like, why would I do that? But like, for instance, if you're a person who's below um, average height, you know, can you reach the pedals? Is that going to be an issue? Can you adjust the seat? If you're the opposite where you're, you know, you're taller than your average person, are you going to be comfortable in the long run in that car? Like if you were to take a $300, you know, 300, I'm sorry, three, 300 mile trip, you know, are you going to be comfortable in? So little tidbits, right? Just to, to look at when you're test driving. All right, so when we're looking at the prices, so look at the markup, right? This is the sticker price on that MSRP minus what the dealer paid for the vehicle. And you'll see that on that, um, the, the, the image that I told you that is on the window, you'll see all this information on there. You just gotta do the math, right? Minus the sticker price from what the dealer paid for the vehicle. Um, and of course the dealer has cost too, right? They wouldn't be in the business if they couldn't make money. So there's advertising, there's business costs. So kind of consider that when you're considering to how to negotiate. Okay. And when you're negotiating, uh, negotiate, negotiate beginning with the dealer, what the, with what the dealer paid and up, right? Not from the sticker price and lower. Okay, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be as feasible for them. Of course, they're not gonna make anything off of it that way. But again, um, beginning with what the dealer paid and up. And that gives you some wiggle room. Um, when we're looking for a car, right, or we're getting ready to negotiate, make sure you've researched at least three vehicles, right, whether it's going in person and looking at them, whether it's just Googling it, just really doing a lot of research. The other thing is be willing to walk away, right? Um, I made this mistake <laughs> when we purchased our first vehicle. I just, it was, it was what I wanted um, and I didn't want to walk away and that cost me in the long run. I didn't realize it till later. Um, but be willing to walk away. If they're not willing to negotiate with you, hey, you know, you'll always find something else. And maybe, who knows, maybe it wasn't meant to be. But be willing to walk away because sometimes it won't, it won't work out. And that's okay. We can, we can keep on, on searching after that. Um, when we're negotiating, start with what the dealer paid and add money to that, right? So it can be that you offer they counter offer. They're like, no, you know, but we're not going to do that. Maybe you make another offer. They counter offer again, right? And say, hey, you know what? I'm only going to go up to the third offer. That's it. That's my final offer. And again, be willing to wait, walk away if they're not willing to work with you. 
So usually when you're negotiating, the third offer is what you know your bottom line is. Like you cannot go below that, especially according to your budget, right? And, and don't budge. Like, hey, no, this is where I'm staying. I, I can't go below that. This is my budget. Um, some common questions you may receive from a salesperson, right? Do you have a trade-in? They'll ask that right off the bat, right? If they know that you're going to have, uh, you're going to, you're going to give, they're going to give you money for a trade-in, they might not lower that price much on the new car. So their wiggle room for negotiation is really closed now, right? It's, it's very limited. So maybe don't say that at the beginning, right? Just ask questions, kind of keep that to yourself and see where that takes you. When you're purchasing a car, when you're shopping for one, be prepared because it's going to take a lot of time right? Um, and it could be that you go from one dealership to the next. Uh, it will, it'll take a lot of time. Even when you're signing your paperwork, your contract, that may take a lot of time too. Um, but um, I can't, uh, I, I said earlier is if you can go in hand already with what, you know, the credit, with the loan document that the loan or the credit union is going to give you this much money, go in with that, right? Don't share it right away uh, because that is not going to give you much wiggle room. But again, um, as long as you have that, when you go on to a dealership looking for a car, that's going to save you time as well. And it's probably going to cost you a lot less. And make sure you have the following, a driver's license, current vehicle loan, and for registration, if you're trading in, your bank account information, your pay, income information, right? Um, they may need this. Again, if you can get your loan from a bank or a credit union and not so much from the dealership, I would say go for that. That's going to cost you less. But I know some people can't do that, right? But again, these are things that you'll, you will need to take with you if you plan to do that. Things to avoid, right? Um, and this, it's typical. They will ask you this right away, especially if you're trying to buy a car online. It'll tell you, uh, what's your desired payment? Right? Kind of keep that to yourself. Um, again, that's if you're in control of that, that's going to give you more wiggle room for negotiation. If you have already a pre-approval amount, like you've talked to your credit union or uh, bank already, and you know how much they're going to loan you for that car, don't mention it, right? Keep it to yourself until you can negotiate and see what you want and see where you can, you know, um, where you can be at as far as the pace or the scale that's going to cost you, that's going to help you. Um, again, if you have a trade-in, don't say it right away because again, that's going to close your window for negotiation. Okay, it's going to be very limited. Don't sign any contracts that have blank spaces. Make sure that everything you're signing, and I know it's very overwhelming, especially when you're signing documentation uh, for a car when you're purchasing one, but make sure that everything you're reading, you know, everything that you're signing and make sure it doesn't have blank spaces. Um, the other thing is don't buy a car without considering the entire cost. Not only um, the cost of the vehicle, um, what it's going to cost you, how much your payments are going to be per month, but also the maintenance on it. Like what, you know, if you have a certain car, you're going to put miles on it, a lot of miles. That just like the big picture, right? That means you're probably going to have to buy tires more often. Do you have a big car where you have, you know, your tires are going to be super expensive? I don't know. It may be. Or maybe it's the opposite that you're like, okay, this is affordable. I can do this, right? So it's always looking at the big picture. Uh, registration, we mentioned this earlier, the taxes. So the entire cost. And always uh, consider just having something put away, just extra money, just in case something happens to that vehicle. Do I have enough to be able to pay the maintenance on it or pay a mechanic to fix it? I think that's the hardest, right, to consider when you're, when you're purchasing a vehicle. Research, 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 reachers as much as you can. Um, there's vehicle safety rating websites, right? Consumerreports.org, that'll help you. That'll give you an idea if this is one of your main things, right? If you're trying to purchase a car, you want the safest car out there, or at least that has a high rating. Um, vehicle pricing, uh, that gives you an idea of how much cars, maybe that specific model, that specific year, how much it runs, right? And it gives you, again, it gives you that idea of, okay, if this is how much it is, an average pay, then this, this car dealership is charging me too much. Or maybe it's that, okay, what's well, an average? I think it's okay. Uh, so truecar.com, kbb.com, um, all of these, right? All these will help you. The other thing is the Carfax or other vehicle background checks. That's going to help you in the long run. Um, it'll help you to know your reach, you know your history on that car. Um, and it'll determine if you're going to have to need more maintenance later on or if that's going to cost you, right? It, it really helps just to research. Um, and again, it, to each is it, to each their own, right? We have to um, we have we each have our needs, but when we're 
considering buying a vehicle, it's like, okay, these are my needs. Um, how much is that going to cost me? Um, and compared to other prices, is that worth it? I, it may be, right? Maybe it's super expensive, but it's worth it to you. But again, maintain it within your budget. The other thing too is, um, I'm coming towards the end of the presentation, but the other thing too, and I'll share this tidbit, just doing these workshops, um, and I've always kept this in mind after that, but a person, uh, we did a workshop for or, for an organization, and um, a person in, that, uh, in the audience mentioned to us after, after the fact, after we did a presentation, she mentioned that when she was growing up, um, she did, she, her parents, you know, helped her get through buying a car, but her dad always told her, okay, when you're finished paying off this car, let's say that you're paying $400, $500 per month. Once you're done making that payment, once you're done paying off that car, keep on making those payments to yourself and put it into a savings account. And one thing that she mentioned is that um, the whole idea was to help her buy purchase a new car, maybe as a down payment, right? Because she's still making these, she was already used to making that $500 payment. So she just had it sitting in the savings account. Um, the other thing too, is when you have that, when you get into that mentality, you're still making that payment to yourself, but it can also help cover any costs that you may need for maintenance on that car. Maybe it's the tires, maybe you need new tires, which we know are pricey. Um, maybe it's just you needed maintenance. It has too many miles on it at this point and you want to make it last a little longer. You have that backup. So again, it's just preparing, right? Um, and just do your research, really think outside the box, especially when you're, when you're trying to purchase a vehicle. All right. So I know that was a very short presentation. Uh, what questions do you have? Let me um, close this here. Okay, so would you explain down payment, trade-in, and rebate? So a down payment would mean, um, so let's say that your car is going to cost you $14,000. So you're getting a loan for $14,000 to pay that car off, right? You're getting a loan for your bank or your credit union. So because you're, you have that loan, this is your set amount, right? I'm just throwing numbers out in there. So let's say your monthly payment is going to be $300. So if you have a down payment already, let's say you get that loan, let's say you have $5,000 in the bank and you're like, okay, or in your, your account, you're like, okay, well, I can use that as a down payment. So when you have that down payment, that automatically, that $5,000 is going to go towards your loan, right? So that means that ultimately now um, you're going to owe a little less, right? You don't owe as much to the bank or the credit union. So that means your monthly payment will go down. Okay? Usually it will go down. So um, the other thing too, is maybe you're making it to the car dealership. Hey, this is how much I have in cash. I have the loan for the rest. Again, it'll help you. It'll bring down your, your monthly payment. A trade-in would be like, if you have a car right now, um, let's say, I'm just gonna say it out loud, right? I'm driving an Explorer. Um, I can, I, I'm looking for a car. I'm currently looking for a vehicle. So I can go to the car dealership I already have my letter, right, saying this is how much um, the bank or the credit union is going to give me to for a loan. I can go to that car dealership and say, okay, I want this vehicle, okay, and when I'm all said and done, I'm ready to pay, it's like, okay, but I have a trade-in. So what they can do is if that car, that like my Explorer, if it's in good um, in good standing, you can say, right, it's, it's pretty good. It has a new motor in it, everything. They can give me money for that car. So it's kind of like I'm trading it in. Yes, I want to buy a purchase. I want to purchase another vehicle from you, but this is mine. Um, how much are you going to give me for this car? All right. So it can be. It's not a lot. Usually, it's not a lot, especially if you car the car dealership. Maybe it's a thousand. Maybe it's five hundred. Whatever it may be. But again, those thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, it can go. Um, they'll give it to me, but I can use it towards my purchase of the new car. If that made sense. Um, rebates. It's kind of the same thing, right? It's like a coupon. Um, oh, well, I won't say coupon, but let's say like PG&E um, gives a lot of rebates at certain times of the year for electric cars. So let's say I bought this car, um, it was $15,000. I made the whole loan, you know, I got a loan for it. I'm making payments on it. At the end of the year, um, during their tax season, when you do your taxes, that PG&E or that, that government um, government rebate, you can say, right? They're saying, okay, because this person purchased an electric car, we're going to give them money back. We're going to give them $500 back. So it's money that you're gaining because of that rebate, right? Or it could be that they're giving it to you during taxes, or it could be that they're taking $500 off the vehicle price because it's, it's an electric car. I think I like, I was all over the place that, but did that, that make sense, Matt? Yes. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. I felt like I was all over the place on the answers. So the other question, banks offer credit for a vehicle. Also, dealers offer too. Is there any difference between them? Yes, banks, credit unions, and dealerships offer loans for your vehicles. Um, yes, there is a difference. Uh, and I'm going to speak in general, okay? Usually at car dealerships, because they're making money off of it, the interest rate that you're going to get to get that loan from them, it's going to be a little higher probably, right? If you get it with your bank or your credit union, someone you already have history with, um, usually uh, it'll be a little more affordable. So maybe your interest rate may be a little lower compared to that car dealership, what they're offering you. And if this happens, so I, I hope that answered your, your, your question, but um, I'm gonna go off on a tangent here, but also, um, oh my gosh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought. Okay, I'll go back to it, it'll come back to me. But anyway, yes, those, uh, that, it's a big difference. Oh, refinance. So let's say that that's what I was trying to get at. So let's say you did, you get a loan, you got a loan from the car dealership. Um, it was a high interest rate maybe. And you're like, okay, well, I have a good credit score. I have good credit history. So really um, I can ask, I can, I can get something cheaper. Like I can get a better interest rate if I got a loan from my bank or credit union. So what you can do is you can re, uh, refinance. So let's say you owe $15,000, right? Um, now on that car, now what you can do is go to a credit union and or your bank and say, right, I want to free, free I, I bought this car, but I want to refinance. And what they'll do is they'll give you a loan. They could give you a lower interest rate, give you a loan to pay off that amount that you owe. And now instead of only uh, owing the car dealership, you're going to owe the credit union or the bank, but at a lower interest rate. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, read what's in the chat. It says, I am planning to buy a used car on Facebook market and the car has a warranty. When I buy the car, do I hold the warranty or is it only valid for first owner? That would be, uh, when be careful, right? If you're buying your car on Facebook market, make sure it's legit. Um, sometimes car dealerships will buy on there, but make sure that's, that's legit. Um, but as far as the warranty, it all depends on the car. One, if it's still like, um, if it's still a newer vehicle, it may have a manufac manufacturer's warranty um, that will, that maybe you can get, right? Maybe it's still good to you. The other thing too, is that if it's a used vehicle, maybe what uh, the car dealership is selling on Facebook market, um, maybe the car dealership has a warranty. So um, I hope that answers. When I, so when I buy the car, do I hold the warranty or is it only valid for first owner? It all depends on the car and the dealership. Okay. So it can be, it can be different. Yeah. It just depends on where you're getting it from. And sometimes car dealerships, uh, they'll offer, um, they'll offer extra warranty like a longer amount of warranty or a longer amount of a larger amount of miles for that car, but you have to pay a little extra aside from the regular warranty they're offering. And sometimes people use it just as a safety net. All right, any other questions? I don't think I see any more other questions, Noemi, but great. Thank you, everybody, for asking these great questions. And we yeah. do have the recording, so it will be posted on our website. If anybody needs to revisit or, you know, look through some of the material that you presented today, it will be available on our website. Um, but thank you, everybody, so much for coming. Noemi, thank you again for a great presentation. Um, if people don't have any other questions, that's it for today. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you.